Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering a offering from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Now, in August, I'm doing a bit of a three year celebration. I've been on YouTube for three years now, and I've been kind of tenuously pulling around for things to do with the number three. So there we are, 36.155. Very tenuous, I know, but it's a good excuse to cover something from the SMWS. Now, in the glass today, under coin 153 and in the uh, SMWS glass itself which is it's pretty cool it's pretty cool that they don't immediately go for a Glencarn it isn't actually the industry standard I know a lot of people think it is now but it really isn't technically this isn't either but you'll definitely see more of a tulip style glass at official tastings maybe not tastings but kind of like competitions and things like that they won't use a Glencarn, they'll use something a little bit different, the ISO glass, I, I call it, which is the proper name for it, the International Standards Organization, whatever. Moving on. The glass today, we've got the 36.155. Uh, if you're not familiar with the SMWS, it's a uh, kind of members club. If you want to buy their bottles, you have to be a member. There'll be links in the description below if you want to become a member. It's a worldwide thing, and uh, I'm not sure what the price is right now, but all the details will be a little low. The code they use, they don't actually tell you the distillery, although technically they are here. The first part before the decimal is the distillery code, and that's the 36th distillery that they've used. In order, so literally after the first one was number one, the second distillery they used was number two. Moving on. The number after the decimal place, the 155 in this case, is the uh, cask that they used in the order that they've used it. So this is the 155th offering from this distillery. Now, although they, they keep it a secret on the SMWS, you can go basically anywhere online and find this information out for yourself if you like. But as I've said on previous videos that I've covered their stuff, it's all part of the, the kind of fun of it all, if you like. You know, you could go and buy a bottle from any distillery if you want, but what the SMWS does is a slightly different take on those things. non chill filtered, natural colored, cask strength all the time. So they very rarely get more than kind of two, 300 bottles out of each cask. That's why they're a bit special. Big complaints that people get about the SMWS is that you can't sort of try before you buy. You know, very often you won't get the chance to try them before they've sold out. This one is still available just about. And I think it's roughly 80 pounds in the UK. Don't know what that translates to. Anyway, enough information about that. Let's check out this whiskey and see what we've got in this glass. Now. The other thing they do, apart from give it a designation, is they pull some information from the tasters. They go through this whole host of, of tasting notes that I won't go into, and they give it a name based on that. This one is called Marmalade in a Nutshell. Not sure who came up with that, but usually they have kind of quirky names, and if you know any of the SNWS guys, they'll tell you that it's um, not as kind of snobbish as it sounds, some of those uh, titles. They really are just having fun with it. Sometimes they pull out ridiculous names and uh, chuck it onto the bottle. They're just having a laugh, I think, most of the time. So take it with a pinch of salt. It's just one of those things. The other thing they'll tell you on the label, lots of information on there, and I'll go through that slowly throughout the video, but they also have a color-coded designation, which gives you an idea of the flavor profile you're gonna get. This one is sweet, fruity, and mellow. And it's uh, roughly number two. I'll put a thing up on here. So it's gonna be around here on the top. Starts out kind of the really light and fruity flavorfuls, moves down into the sherries, dark fruits, that sort of thing, then into the more coastal vibes, and then right at the bottom, you have the kind of heavily peated stuff. So this one's right up there. So you know, generally, if you're not into your peated stuff, but you're also not really into your sherried stuff, this might be something that's worth a look at. More information before we get onto the nosing and the tasting. It's a 20 year old whiskey, it's a Speyside. It's uh, distilled on the, looking at notes, 15th of August, 1997, and it's a refill ex-bourbon barrel. So it isn't first fill, it isn't virgin first fill, it's a, a refill, but it's 20 years, probably gonna be okay. Obviously, like I said earlier, natural colored, this is what you're getting. And it is one of 185 bottles. And like I said, there's probably only about 20 or so of them left now. So you wanna check that out in the link below. Let's go. Let's get onto the nose and see what we've got in the glass. The funny thing about these uh, glasses that they give is they're a slightly thinner neck. As you can see, the, uh, the coin sits almost comically uh, oversized on it, whereas it's just the perfect size for a Glencarn. 
So what you really don't want to be doing, if you're tasting in a glass like this, is sticking your nose straight into it. This is a percentage of 56.9. Very high, very high indeed. Now, I'm clearly being led by the name here. It's marmalade in a nutshell. I'm smelling marmalade. Again, could be marketing, who knows, but I'm definitely getting kind of orangey texture from it. Really nice though, it's maybe slightly woody as well. And dare I say, probably pulling out from the tasting notes, maybe a bit of ginger in there as well. Let's try on the palette and see what we got. Mm. Wow. My lord, what a flavour. Now, the wonderful thing about the SNWS is that everything's cast strength. So, this one 56.9, but it can be anywhere from between kind of low 50s to high 50s, maybe even 60s sometimes, depending on the age of the whiskey. Obviously, the older it gets, especially in Scotland, it will lose more of that ABV as it goes along. There are some countries that actually increase in ABV because the water evaporates. Bit strange, but that doesn't happen in Scotland. It's, it's the other way around. Water stays in, alcohol evaporates off. So it's a huge, huge, huge hit. Uh, really, you want to be trying this after maybe one or two whiskies to kind of really open your palate up to the, the, the high ABVs. But if you're into high ABVs, go nuts. This is just uh, kind of general vibes from me. Mm. So it's kind of more of that oranginess to it. I really am getting that marmalade flavour. And I really, I really hope that I am actually tasting that and it isn't just pulling off the tasting notes, but it really is quite orangey, quite uh, gingery. Some of those vanillas coming through, it isn't overpowering, it isn't bourbon-like vanillas. There's probably a fair few other things to pick out there. There's some spices leaning on the nutmeg side of things. So I usually go on about cinnamon, but it isn't really that. It's, it's got a kind of gets to the back of your mouth vibe to it. Really good though. Mm. I don't know if you remember the last SMWS video that I covered. I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was good. It was a good whiskey. It was good quality. Everyone knows that. But for the price of it, I wasn't sure about it. Now, I often think that if it isn't peated, I probably wouldn't bother spending that sort of money on it. As I said earlier, this is about £82. I actually think it might be worth it. It is, uh, it's expensive and I would have to think long and hard about it. Thankfully I've got to try this before I buy it, but it's one of those things that I think could be good value to someone. Now if you only buy heavily peated stuff, this isn't gonna be for you, but it isn't a kind of typical Speyside flavor. I go on about that a lot, I'm not getting those orchard apples. It isn't kind of 40% kind of light or anything like that. It's a very good ABV. Really worth trying if you're looking to expand into that kind of space side area and get a kind of greater vibe from it. Really try to understand the ABV, how that unpacks it. And try new distilleries. Now again, I'm not gonna tell you what distillery this is, but you can look it up if you want. And it isn't a distillery that I've covered on the channel before, so really interesting to try them. And it's made me interested in trying more from them. There you go, another interesting one. Hopefully I'm gonna cover more SMWS stuff in the future. Hit the subscribe button and you can see more of it just like this. Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vim PF and on today's episode we're going to be covering a single 